this radio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth, cheap price point. That's what you want it for. That's what you'll use it for. So here's the box. Really nothing crazy on the marketing. Everything that they say is true. So here's a seven inch touchscreen diagonally. Um, you have Bluetooth 5.0, you get Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It is a capacitive HD screen, meaning the resolution is 1024 by 600. So here, let me open it for you. Pull this, open this, open this flap. Get your little bracket. This you're not gonna use on any of the Acuras. Get your owner's manual and a warranty registration card. Then you have your protective padding. It's cool is it does have a remote that doesn't come with any batteries, but this will control the radio. So here, it takes triple A's, two triple A batteries. You get CarPlay or Android Auto, so you can switch into that, hang up and pick up, volume up, volume down, previous next, and then mode and power. So, you know, back in the day, this was a big thing. You used to get a little remote, so it's cool. I mean, who knows if you'll use it, pretty cool. Then you do get your mounting brackets with your mounting screws. So these are pretty important. These brackets are really not going to use. They're more for a universal application. In your Acura, you're always going to have a dash kit. Then we have our wiring harness. So our wiring harness here. Here are all our speakers. This is your rear left, front left, front right, rear right. That's how you get audio. Most Acuras aren't going to use this. You're going to use the RCAs on the back of the radio. But on select few... Acura TL 99 to 03, MDX uh, from non Bose from 01 to 06, will, you will end up using that. And then here's a more important harness. So power, ground, uh, amp turn on, illumination. And then you have three special wires. So you have steering wheel control, key one, key two, and steering wheel control ground. These are very important on your Acura. These will you will use to get your steering wheel controls to work. You have a Toyota, any Japanese car uses resistive steering wheel controls, these will work as well. Uh, so, all right, we'll put that to the side. Here we go, let's grab our radio. So, a little bit of a chin. Uh, in the Acura TL dash kit, this chin isn't enough, so you'll see it doesn't fit the best. Uh, it still looks good, it's just a little bit of gap in the bottom. But here we go, we have our volume knob, real nice volume knob, we have a cover here for our USB and our aux. And then you can see a nice nice faceplate. HD screens, capacitive. Here's a diagram of all the connections and our model number. So all our RCAs, the uh, connectors we covered. And then the only thing is this does have special wires here in the back. So this has a built-in microphone up here, but if that microphone doesn't work enough for you, it also has a microphone for an additional uh, external mic. So if you're a big Bluetooth caller, you're always on the phone in your car and you want to get this radio, this microphone might not be enough for you, so you can always grab an external mic. We'll have one linked in the description. Have your reverse trigger if you want to do a backup camera, and then your backup power camera um, ground and power. You also have a parking brake control, but this doesn't come into play for this radio, so this wire probably never going to hook up. If you're doing a backup camera, then these three wires become something that you need to deal with. This is your Bluetooth antenna, so you don't touch this. It just needs to be here to um, make that Bluetooth connectivity a little better. And then here we have all our RCAs. So we have rear right, rear left, front right, front left. This is in, so you have audio right in, audio left in, video in. You have subwoofer out, you have your front camera input, your rear camera input, and then you get two video outputs. So I'll show you that all later on, but this is kind of what covers the radio. It does come with a screen protector, and that's really it. No rear USB ports, so you're always gonna have a wire here in front if you wanna do something USB. No wireless CarPlay, just regular wired CarPlay and Android Auto. And again, here is your diagram. And that's everything that comes in the box. The other thing is just foam and then you're packing uh, so you know your package doesn't smell. So I'm going to put everything back. I'm going to turn the radio on and take a look at it. So something that's definitely important is boot time. This is our first cold boot. So according to this, it's been... good 10 seconds on that cold boot so let's go set up our settings this is english 
and we are in America. Okay, so I'm trying to get you the best angle. But you can see this is an IPS panel, I believe, so you have very good viewing angles, meaning I can turn the radio some, and there's no washout in the colors. So this means when you mount it in your car, the angle you look from is still going to be good. The display is still going to look the right way. The colors are going to be accurate. All right, let's go over what this radio has in its face one more time. So we have our aux port here in the corner, followed by a USB port and SD card slot. Then we have dual function forward and back. We have a mute button, we have a home button, and then we have a dual function volume knob. So our volume knob acts as obviously our volume knob. If we have uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, it is our mic button. And if we want to turn the radio off, it also turns the radio off. Um, to turn it back on, you just press it. And the radio will actually boot up entirely. So this is like a cold boot. Uh, it actually shut off. If you just want to turn off the screen, it also has a button to do so. So if we click here, that turns off our screen. If we tap it, it wakes up. The operating system to this radio is very simple, but it is a bit clunky. So here we have our nice clock. Then we have radio, USB, Bluetooth for phone calls, Bluetooth for music, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. If we swipe over, we have our front camera, we have the SD card, we have aux in, we have AV in, and then we have our settings. Front camera, there's a dedicated video, video port. SD card, we have our SD card here in this corner. AV in, we have a dedicated AV in port in the back. I'm gonna jump into settings real quick. Here we have our basic settings, so we have the date, the time. For sound, I'm sure you could hear that beep. You can turn that beep on and off. You can go into your equalizer, which will include your fader and balance. Here's your, I think it's a 16 band EQ, one, 16 band EQ. Then we have time alignment, and then just resetting everything to factory. Then we do have subwoofer control, which is just a low pass filter on your sub and whether you want your sub on and off. Here in general, we have a couple hidden settings that are important. Um, video control, it's just for the panel, so you really won't touch that. Brightness, during the day, you'll have it at 10. At night, it'll probably default to a one or two when you change, when you turn on your headlights, but it does, this is the brightest it gets. You saw the dimmest. Here's your steering wheel control. So when, when you go to program your steering wheel controls, you'll hit a button on the steering wheel, and then you'll press one of these, and uh, you'll be able to program your steering wheel controls. We walk through that procedure at the end of the video, but this is where it is. Radio area we set, serial version, and version you might need for troubleshooting language we set. We're not going to reset. Something that is important here is if you are an avid Bluetooth caller, this built-in microphone here in this corner is not enough for you. You can use the rear mic, you just have to switch it. So F and R, front mic, or rear mic, and that'll control the position for which microphone is listening. Driver position you're gonna leave. Driver for forbidden, <laughs> driver forbidden watch video. This is so that if you're playing USB media or media through your F, um, SD card that you need the parking brake grounder or not, you're just gonna put that to off and just leave it there. It's just a safety mechanism. Then you have, if you want to have your LEDs on and off, and what color you want them. So they're just, so you know, maybe green's your favorite color, maybe blue, maybe purple. I'm going to leave these at blue. And then you have the ability to change your wallpaper to the wallpaper that you would like. So that is your basic settings available in this radio. Everything else is really in your face. So the backup camera, there is no camera for you to hit right away so if you installed your backup camera in an always on configuration you can't access it you can only access it when in reverse but you can always access your front camera so i'm going to hook up some cameras and some other stuff to this and i'll show you how that works so we got our front camera hooked up so this has a here i'll just bring there this has a dedicated front camera input that's where we are hooked up and here when i am using right now i'm regular am fm right so i'm in the radio Put a radio station actually works all right so here i am in the radio i'm going to go to my front camera home front camera and there you go so here's the camera looking back at you so you can access it at any time i'm going to do the same with the backup camera but the backup camera is going to auto trigger 
it doesn't have a button here like the backup camera does. So I'm putting the car in reverse for my backup camera to activate. I just put it in reverse now. So the car will get quiet and here you could say it says camera and this is my backup camera view now um, looking at you. So when I get out of reverse, I'm letting this go, I get out of reverse, it switches back. But if the, even though this camera has power, there's no way for me to see it uh, if I want to look at my backup camera at any time. The next video source we have is AVN, so I'm just going to move my camera to AVN. So this is good if you want to so this is good if you want to send video from your phone or another source to the unit. You can do it with a bunch of adapters. You would hit AVN and then your source of video uh, would come in from here. Uh, you can see we get the warning. So I'm going to go into settings, general, and then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to turn drive forbid and watch video off. Go back, go back to AVN and now my camera comes up. Those are my three video imports. Uh, it's just a matter of how you want to use them. Front camera, you could hook up to your front camera. If you want it to auto trigger, then your backup camera needs to be hooked up to the backup camera input. If you want to use it whenever you want to use it, you could wire it to your front camera. And then AVN, you can use uh, to watch video or other stuff from an external source onto the screen. Now I'm going to show you the video out portion of the radio. This also has video out. It has two video out ports. So if you want to run like rear DVD monitors, I know that's really not a thing anymore. But if you want to do that or you have a rear entertainment or something like that that you want to send video to, uh, you can. Uh, to your factory rear entertainment, it's going to be a little tough. You're going to need some integration pieces to do on your own. But if you have aftermarket rear entertainment or something you want to send video to, maybe that old navigation screen you want to send some video to, there is a possibility to do that. You are going to need some converters and adapters. Uh, but this does have video out if you're looking for that. And then if I go home, but my video is still playing, it will play on my second monitor. Uh, I don't have dual source control, so if I do change it to aux, it will uh, leave that alone. But if you do watch video um, from your USB or SD card, the video will come up on the uh, secondary display. All right, guys, so we covered some of the basic features of this radio. But where this radio shines or where we recommend it is if you're looking for a budget unit that can do Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and Bluetooth. You could possibly add a backup camera, you could add a subwoofer, but you can't do any complex audio system with this. It will work with your factory amplifier and your Acura, so you're safe knowing this will integrate properly. It's going to fit into the most of the dash kits the right way. We'll cover that in a little bit later in the video. But if you're looking for like advanced audio features or like crazy sound out of this thing, this isn't the radio for that. This radio, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth, cheap price point. That's what you want it for. That's what you'll use it for. So I'm going to hook up Android Auto. I'm going to hook up Apple CarPlay. And I'll show you what that looks like on the screen. So we're going to do Apple CarPlay first. We only have a USB port in the front. So you'll always be, your wire will always be here. And two, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. So standard CarPlay. This is a capacitive touchscreen with a HD panel. So Apple CarPlay looks great. Your maps look really nice. They have good color. There's no weird washed out. Um, thing going on and since it's the IPS panel you have good color accuracy and good viewing angles So if I bring you over here still looks nice if I bring you over there still looks nice So if I want to go back to the home screen I could just hit home and I come back to Apple CarPlay something I will warn you about this radio is not listed by Apple as Apple CarPlay compatible Obviously you see it working it works, but Apple on their website only supports Pioneer Kenwood um, I can't remember all the other ones on top of my head, but they normally support name brands. So if you have an issue with Apple CarPlay and you try to reach out to Apple, they're not going to help you. But I can tell you from experience, this radio, Apple CarPlay, wired connection is solid. You're not going to have any issues. And now, if you don't know about Apple CarPlay, I recommend looking at a whole entire video of all the features that are here. But I'm going to disconnect CarPlay. I'm going to show you what Android Auto looks like next. So here we have Android Auto plugged in. And you can see again, real nice screen, HD. So we have the HD screen. So we get good viewing angles from wherever we're looking at. This volume knob acts as our mic button. So if I hit it, hey, what time is it? It's 3.23 p.m. 
If you want to know more about Android Auto and all its features, I recommend looking up another video. There is a lot of features here, uh, but if you know what Android Auto or Apple CarPlay are, this radio has both. It's just a wired Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. You can always go back to the main menu and then hit the icon to access that platform again. When it comes to fitment, this radio will fit on almost any of the Acura dash kits. So this is the dash kit for an 01 to 0, uh, 6 MDX. This is the same opening that's on the TL and the CL as well. Here we have the dash kit for the from Metro for the TSX. And here you can see it fits pretty well as well. There's no gaps or anything. Uh, then we have the dash kit from eBay for the TSX. And that dash kit fits well also. You see no glaring gaps or anything, it looks good. Um, then we have the dash kit. Then we have the dash kit for newer TL, so 09 or 13 TL. This is the same opening in the MDX and the TSX. So you can see it looks good as well. Um, no gaps, nothing crazy. So it'll sit well. The only dash kit that this has an issue with is the TL and that's because the TL dash kit is a little unforgiving it has a smaller size than all the other dash kits so when you put it in you see it doesn't look terrible here at the top but here at the bottom there is a bit of a gap so if you're cool with that this radio will work uh, if you're not cool with that you're gonna look for a better radio the radios that fit in the TL dash kit the best are gonna be the Sony's uh, with their extended buttons, but if not a Pioneer or a Kenwood with a bottom row of buttons looks really good. Uh, but if you want to use this radio, you can just be prepared for that small gap. Alright guys, so we're on an MDX 07 to uh, 13. This one does have nav. We got some news for you people with the MDX with nav in a little bit. But uh, back to the radio. So I'm going to program our steering wheel controls. I'm going to go home. Then we're going to go Gonna go home, gonna go to settings, you're gonna go to general, you're gonna go to SWC, and here we're gonna program our key. So we're gonna hit clear first, and then we're gonna go program volume up. So volume up is it says uh, the select is volume up, click SWC button for learning. So you hit the button, and you come to the steering wheel, you hit the button, and it'll go solid showing you that it's programmed. So now I'm gonna do volume down. It's gonna start flashing. I'm hitting volume down. So now it went solid. Now I'm gonna do next. So next. Now I'm gonna hit it on the steering wheel. And you can see it went solid. Then I'm gonna do previous. Hit it on the steering wheel, went previous. Now I'm gonna do mode. Hit it on the steering wheel, and I did mode. If you want to keep your other steering wheel control buttons, such as your call control or navigation control buttons, you either have to run wires to the HFL or run wires to uh, the navigation. You can grab the wires in the steering column if you're willing to take this off, and you can then run them to behind the radio and get all your buttons to work. But if you just want simple, easy steering wheel controls, you'll get to keep these. And you can see, now you hit save, or go home, We'll go to the radio, and now volume up works. You can see volume down works, next works, previous works, and mode works. The radio doesn't require the need of a steering wheel control adapter to keep the steering wheel controls. It has one embedded in, so as you can see, we manually programmed them. They began working, and that's all you need. That's one of the reasons that this radio is a great choice for your Acura. The built-in steering wheel controls saves you a lot of money. This radio also has the right amount of RCA ports, so you have the needed five RCA ports for audio outs. So you get to keep fader in balance and your subwoofer. It also provides the proper output voltage. So it's gonna be from like zero volts to four volts, and that's plenty for your factory amplifier or any aftermarket amplifier you plan to run. So overall, I think this radio is a pretty good value. I think it's a diamond in the rough. Uh, if you're looking for the features it has, I can definitely recommend this radio. Uh, if you are thinking of, hey, you know, I don't really know power acoustic, I don't really know the brand, I don't want to risk it, I understand. There are plenty of other radio, um, there are plenty of other radio selections out there. This is just one that 
we find will be very beneficial to those looking at those Amazon or cheap eBay radios trying to get a radio in your car. Uh, this will make sure that you have a nice smooth experience and you get the result that you want because those eBay or Amazon radios don't have the enough RCA ports or if not they don't have the right features and you need other things to get them to work. They don't fit in the dash kits correctly so you can rest assured that this radio will fit in the dash kit. It does have the proper outputs. It has a proper inputs for you and then you can add a backup camera or a subwoofer. This radio is listed on our website. You can get a full package for your TL, TSX, MDX. Uh, they're ready to go. We have plenty in stock. That's it for this video, guys. See this MDX behind me? We finally got our hands on one. We're working on the solution for the navigation-based MDX to install radio and keep all your speakers. So make sure you stay subscribed or make sure you subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet.